Hello, hello. Oh, good. Hi, I'm uh, Helga Stephenson, the honorary chair of uh, RIF, and it's my great pleasure um, to moderate this panel today with um, possibly four of the most powerful men in uh, film festivals in the world. And um, we're going to have a, a, a informal and interesting and productive, I hope, conversation. I'd like to thank uh, Ron for bringing us all here and then for creating this panel because um, this is uh, highly unusual. And as I say, it's a very, very powerful panel. Um, I would say that uh, most people want to get their film in a film festival. And uh, so there are a lot of questions around that. And when you get your film in the film festival, you want to get your film noticed and you want to get your film sold. So we're going to take this from the point of view of independent film. And uh, we hope that, um, I think there are a bunch of questions that come along with that. Um, how do you pick a film festival for your film? Um, how do you pick the right one? How do you get it in the festival? That's another. These are the gatekeepers, the gatekeepers to heaven or hell, depending on whether you get in or you don't. And then once you're in the festival, how do you get your film noticed? And these guys know everything there is to know about that. And of course, you know, once you're there, then how does this help? the marketing strategy that hopefully you have already mapped out for your film. So um, then they're interesting because um, I'll start with Giorgio Gossetti, who runs uh, the Venice Days at Venice, which is a parallel section to the main festival. He runs 12 films and uh, all handpicked by him. Arno Gourmelin runs the Director's Fortnight in Cannes, also a parallel program, and he runs approximately 24 films, yes? Less, less than 20 now. Yeah. Less than 20, so these are highly curated film um, programs. Then we move into Frédéric Boyer, who's in New York City, running the Tribeca Film Festival, where there's a lot more films. How many do you run, Frédéric? 90, and then you get into Pierce Handling in the Toronto Film Festival where they run over 300 films, all kinds of films. So there are very different kinds of festivals that are represented here at the table. And I would ask um, each one of you, starting with Giorgio, um, to speak to like, what kind of specific programming do you have <laughs> for independent filmmakers, and uh, please in in include shorts and docs. OK. <clears throat> I'm so sorry that you are in the dark. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll try to figure <laughs> That will be. Your programmers are in the light. Filmmakers are in the dark. This is kind of a, uh, a normal situation. Right. Um, the Venice Days started in 2004. And I'm really proud to say that we tried to copy the formula of the Director's Fortnight, which is an historical section, one of the most important in the history of European film festivals and maybe in the world film festivals. Um, yes, it's true that normally we select just maximum 12 movies plus a certain number of special events, a certain number of little homages. But the main focus is on 12 films because we consider that a festival during 11 days, and normally the first, and especially the last one, are terrible days for a festival, um, we need to concentrate our attention over m one maximum two films per day because otherwise we don't have the time to really promote the movie in a difficult context like a major film festival is. Um, 
normally they ask me, what is the criteria of selection for um, the Venice Days cinema? And I repeat a very stupid formula. Uh, we need to emphasize and promote the creativity and the bravery of independent filmmakers and independent production. And no one nowadays exactly knows what is an independent production, an independent filmmaker. I mean, he's not a guy coming with a studio behind him. <laughs> better and better. Uh, but in fact, it's very difficult to compare films starting from the budget, starting from the possibility they have, because from each country you have different situations. It's true that we are totally open to um, look for talent, look for something new, something strange, well done. And it's also true that as we are a parallel section of the festival, we need to be a little bit different from the major selection, from the competition and the auto competition, because otherwise it would be a sort of duplicate of the same kind of style, of the same kind of taste. Uh, so we change a little bit our profile considering the kind of festival director we, we have to face. Nowadays, we try to be very brave, very original, to have genre film and I couldn't say experimental films, but really new films and new formulas in our selection. And more or less, we see 1,000 films per year, uh, looking for 12. Okay, now, the director's coordinate. What are you looking for? Okay, hello, everyone. Um, what are we looking for? Is the, as I, I say to Giorgio, we could say that um, um, it's more or less the, 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 the same approach of, uh, of movies. The Director's Fortnite was created like more than 40 years ago. Um, at, at this time, you, maybe you might know that the film which was presented in Cannes Film Festival, where every, each one was chosen by its, by its country. So there was no really a, like a, a selection from the festival. And so some directors decided to create this, uh, these sections and to, to, to make the film chosen by directors and to, and to propose some independent uh, line of, uh, of films. And I think that all the, the artistic directors who have participated in the Directors Fortnite uh, try to, to keep on the, this, um, this heritage, to, to keep on making it uh, living. And, um, and that's true that, uh, for example, we, we, we are in Cannes, so the, you have the official selection with the competition with another section named uh, Un Certain Regard. So and 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 they and, and they propose something like maybe 40, 50 films. So uh, the dress for night is is not competitive. So we have we are lucky with this as we have a, a, a large uh, liberty, large freedom to to select films, and we decide to 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 make like um, uh, we could say a small selection uh, around around 20 films. And it's more or less the same as George said that we prefer to, to present two films a day. I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good combination. You have time to, to promote the films. You have time to, to really to, to support the films. And uh, I think it's the more important because uh, um, for, you have so many possibilities, so many films in the, during the festival that you, you need to, to help people to, to get the way in the, in the sections. And I'm not the, the director of the sections as uh, my collaborators are today. I'm one of the programmers of the, of the team of Edouard Ventrop. And Edouard, he wants, uh, since he arrived in the director's for, for Fortnite, he, I think he wants to, to, to make a proposal of, uh, of films with, uh, I would say, a lot of tones, a lot of colors. So every year he wants to, to, to mix comedies with uh, genre films with hard house films, with documentaries, so without any borders, the sections must be very complete. And uh, that's it. Uh, what can I say? The, no, no, the, our choices are based on the quality films, so we are not forced. We are not 
category A festival. We have to explain a little bit. And then you need to have only world premiere. We don't, which is good for us because we can pick film from Toronto, Venice, uh, not Cannes, which is a limit, except if a distributor is bringing a film from Cannes. So it's a lot of uh, film exactly we like, a lot of uh, documentaries. And we have a wonderful audience in New York. So there is a... New York City. Y yes, in New York City. So it's... Uh, Sometimes it could be extremely cinematic. Sometimes it could be a documentary about Gori Vidal. And then I was surprised because I just arrived, it was three years ago, and I did the Q&A. And the film is just a portrait, which is wonderful. But it's not a term of cinema, it's not a film, as, because I was also, I was at the fortnight before. So I changed radically to go to Tribeca. But it was very interesting for me because I discovered, okay, cinema could be also something you, you, you show it on the screen, on the wall, on the chapel, somewhere. And in Tribeca, we have so many venues, which is uh, extremely interesting. Um, so Toronto. Thanks, Olga. Um, so Toronto, we run about 280 feature films, which sounds a lot. Um, I think the most important thing to remember is that what we base the festival on is our connection with the public. It's a public festival. And as a result, the range and breadth of material we show is quite broad um, within that. It's very carefully curated, though. We have about 20 programmers who select the 280 features, so about 20 films each. So they're doing a little bit the same job that has been done in the fortnight um, and set in regard, that kind of selection. Um, we've broken the festival apart into many sections. Um, there's a midnight section, a documentary section. There's sections that focus on the discovery of new young filmmakers. So I think, like everyone else, we're looking for very personal, individual voices um, that are moving the boundaries of cinema forward. Uh, we have a section called Wavelengths, which is also devoted really to, I guess, avant-garde experimental cinema. Um, at the same time, we obviously run very uh, accessible films. Some of the major commercial films that are gonna, going to go into release, we ran The Martian just as an example this year of one of those films. So these are films that are designed to go into the marketplace. So Toronto, in a funny way, serves a dual function, and maybe the other festivals do too. Um, we're there to provide a platform for films that are about to be released into the North American marketplace. That's, I think, a crucial role right now. And because of the way we're positioned date-wise, we're seen as a launch platform for, for award season, for the Golden Globes and for the Oscars in particular. Um, that's maybe about 20% of what we run at the festival. The other 80% is the kind of job I think that everyone else is doing and that we really, um, is, the, is, the, is the core of the spine of the festival. It's finding young filmmakers, new filmmakers, most of which don't have um, any distribution network behind them. All rights are available. They're coming to try and sell their films in Toronto. Um, they're trying to connect to, with, with media, obviously but it does function as a very successful marketplace. Um, there's a lot of films that are bought and sold in Toronto. So it's a funny, um, I mean, it's almost like a supermarché, supermarket of cinema, uh, where you're running films again from other festivals. We don't insist on world premieres in Toronto. Um, so it's a, a marketplace of films that have run elsewhere, other festivals, obviously because we're trying to show the best films in front of a public and they don't really care where else it has been, uh, as well as a mix of of world premieres, because I think the, you know, one of the things would be interesting to hear about from my colleagues is I think the game of world premieres is a game that a lot of film festivals have been kind of, maybe not forced into, but it's certainly a game that we're all playing. Um, so we, like everyone else, has to have our share of world premieres as well. Uh, it's not built around that, but uh, we certainly um, have to pay attention to it. We've just started two new sections this year um, in Toronto. One is prime time, which is actually long form television. And it's something that we debated a lot and thought about a lot before we um, put our, our toe into that water. But obviously a lot of filmmakers that we, Balthazar Cormacher has been one of them, um, filmmakers that we have followed as a festival over the years are beginning to, to uh, move into this area. And other filmmakers, Steven Soderbergh, Paolo Sorrentino are working in this form. The other section that we started was, um, a new section, it's 12 films, it's a little bit like what Giorgio is doing um, with Venice Days, it's called Platform. And it was designed to, in a funny way, rebalance the festival because there's so much attention, media attention on the big English language films that are going to go into the award season. 
we wanted to recalibrate a little bit and put a focus on uh, international auteur driven, artistically driven cinema. So it's a section called Platform, named Dr. Zhai Zhangke's famous film. Um, it was a, a three person jury and they uh, gave an award this year. And those films essentially don't have North American distribution as well. So it was an attempt to create a space for them in the marketplace. It's very difficult in North America right now to get space for especially subtitled um, uh, films. So we're, we feel that heavy responsibility to, to create a space for that, uh, th that kind of work. Um, okay, so you have a difference. You have like two North American festivals and then you have two European festivals. So I have my film and it's a magnificent work of art. It's a masterpiece. How do I choose the right festival for my film? So, uh, Giorgio, so you can start with that. Like, how do I decide that I want to go to Venice and I don't want to do the director's fortnight, presuming that uh, it, uh, to apply to get in? I mean, presumably you know how to apply to get into the film festivals, which is you, you go online and you find, ideally, the friends of these people, or ideally you get to know these people and you study who's programming what. But, I mean, I have my masterpiece. How do I figure out where I go with my masterpiece? Well, we can reply in two different words. Uh, the first style of answer is, which is the official one, it's not my point of view. If you want to be considered an artist, you have to go to Venice. If you want to be considered a possible new talent, possible new start in the landscape of cinema, you have to go to Cannes. If you want to try to knock on the American market and to be considered internationally, really, you have to go to Toronto. Uh, if you want to be on the edge, if you want to be new, modern, stylish, and clever, you have to go to Tribeca. And sometimes you can do a certain part of the circuit with your own film. My personal answer is different. It depends when you're ready with your film. If you're ready on January, February, you have to go to Cannes. If they reject you, you can come to Venice <laughs> and you have a chance to win the Golden Lion. It happened a lot of times. Um, if you are lucky enough and you are in Venice and your film agrees with the taste of Frédéric Boyer, you can use of a mutual platform we have in order to be selected like the Venice Days film invited and hosted by Tribeca and vice versa. There is a sort of partnership between the two festivals because we consider we are the two artistic islands in the world. <laughs> Manhattan, down Manhattan, and Venezia Lido, which is not Venezia. Uh, secondly, uh, yes, if you are uh, a prominent talent, a real discovery, Toronto is your place, because it's true that it's not so easy to find your space, to find a real chance among 300 films. But if you win the lottery, it changes your mind, it changes your life. Uh, and as Pierre said, they normally select good films coming from Berlin sometimes, Cannes, Venice. So the doors are open. And in Tribeca, it's true that you face maybe one of the more interesting uh, formula of uh, a city festival, which is brandly new. I mean, from a lot of in the main cities, Montreal, Cairo, Moscow, Wien, but it's quite new. I mean, Toronto started this formula in my opinion. 
to have a very different profile for a festival strongly linked to the audience. If you go to Cannes, it's very difficult to find a regular film goer. You can't buy your ticket in Cannes. If you come to Venice Lido, it's so difficult to find a normal cinephile, a normal person asking for, to go to the movies. In Toronto and in Tribeca, it's totally different. So if you want to experience a different approach, a different feeling between you, the artist, you, the director, and a festival, these two platforms and these two gentlemen are your guys. Yeah, I think George has given a pretty good summation of what we all do. We don't even have to answer. Um, but what I would say for young filmmakers is there's other festivals who are not represented here who are really, really important. The Carnot and Rotterdam just being two of them. And I think that there's no one strategy for any filmmaker. Um, the best thing to do is to talk to as many people as you possibly can. Other filmmakers who've maybe made two, three features, they've gone through the festivals. They can give you really strong advice in terms of which festivals have worked for them. I think what Giorgio's done is kind of have given you a sense of if you've got an audience-friendly film, maybe you're, or you think you've got an audience-friendly film, maybe you're looking for a certain kind of festival versus what, you know, Giorgio's distinction, and I somewhat agree with him, if you've got a film that has very strong artistic aspirations, you're probably looking to um, Cannes and Venice in, in a way. Um, I mean, Berlin sort of straddles the two in a funny way. There's different sections within Berlin, so, I'd say that the, um, the, the Forum of Young Cinema is probably more of what you're doing and Panorama is more of what we're doing. So each festival is quite complex, quite different. Um, but I, I would, the only advice I would give you is just talk to people who've gone down these roads and had to make these decisions. There's producers, there's sales agents, there's a lot of people out there who, who can help you, national organizations with professionals who are really used to placing films and festivals. Um, and I know you have one here in Iceland, and they're very, very aware of uh, the advantages and disadvantages of each individual festival. And maybe an another thing, maybe could be important, is the place the festival is going to give you in a festival, because sometimes you, you it's, 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 it really matters because, uh, because, for example, if your film is uh, will be screened in the in a very in the, during a first week. Same if the film was be, will be eaten at the end of the week. Or, and uh, I think you, you, you understand it with the, when you have a dialogue with the, with the festival programmers or festival directors and, and, and you have to discuss how, how much to, how are they going to support your film. And, it, and, uh, and I think that you, have, you it's, it, it has to, to count in the, in the choice of the festival, that you, you, you feel the, the empathy of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the festival, of the directors, of, of the team uh, with the film. I think it's, uh, it's quite yeah, important. I, I agree that the positioning of the festival inside the festival is extremely important. Definitely. Depending yeah. on what you need to also, get out also of for the market. festival. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> well, I think uh, the, the producer, the filmmaker, she should go where they are loved and where they are desired. This is the most important, because if they feel there is a strategy or you have to wait, go where you are loved. And sometimes it's, uh, it could be Munich, sometimes it could be Stockholm and Tokyo. There's not only Cannes, Toronto, Berlin, Tribeca, it's just this game. And if we are all playing this game, it's bad. And one of the things is so many people are saying, oh, I'm going to put this film in Cannes, this one will be in Toronto and Venice. They don't know we are selecting film. And most of the time we are saying no, and they're upset with this, that's life. But we are, there is a barrier, we are, uh, we love film, we are cinephile, and we are selecting films. We are not a, a bag of, you know, no. <laughs> we, are, we, are, it's a, we are doing our job, we are trying to do it So there best. is life beyond you people. Yes, it is important to know that. We are totally different, we have different tastes, but we, we are choosing films, and when we like a film, we are bringing all our energy, our volunteers, to help uh, this film to be good, to be connected to the press, to have a market, in, well, mostly in Toronto. And the last thing is uh, sometimes, uh, Premier, it's important, but sometimes it's not so important. I will going to give you a very good example because the film is Icelandic. We play Fuzzy 
uh, Dagurkari last year in Tribeca, the film won three awards, and it played in Berlin before, but at the very end, uh, out of competition, so, okay, there's the press, the market, but the film sold much more. And the same with Laura Bispuri film, the film with Alba Roswasher, it's a match factory film. The film, it's a wonderful film. The film play, but the last day, everybody was uh, away, and so it, it premiered, for everybody, it premiered in Tribeca because everybody was, uh, it was, by the way, it was in competition. Right. And we don't care, it was a competition Berlin, because it was not awarded, we were allowed to put it in competition, and we have to be free about that, and very sometimes a film, when the film, the proposition of the film is to be played at the, on the second week, if you are a second festival, it's okay, if you're at the third festival, it's okay, if you are, maybe after the five festival, you're gonna give an highlight of the film nobody did before. I would say that, um, do you wanna say something? No, that uh, there is nothing that makes a programmer uh, heart programmer's heart race faster than discovering a new talent and being able to present it to the world. Am I correct? It makes you very happy to do those things. It is uh, to make a real discovery. A new talent is something that keeps every programmer looking at film after film after film after film. Now, once you get to the festival, there, it is an intricate relationship, I would say, between the festival and the filmmaker and the producer, how this film gets noticed. Because as, uh, you know, thank God for the trades, because the trades will start talking about your film. And that they don't mention when you were played or how you were played, but you're there and then the, the, the wave starts to roll and people start picking up traces of your film. Um, I would say that uh, all of the festivals try to promote the films and the filmmakers as much as they can. Obviously, when it's a small selection, it's easier. And when it's a bigger selection, you have to fight harder. But there are more people around to notice your film. So I would say, um, what would you say in terms of how um, a filmmaker should use the festival in order to get noticed? Like what can they do when they're there to get more notice for their film, more press or just attention? A strip maybe. Well, there you go. <laughs> Stripping is one suggestion, next. I think uh, it, it actually starts before you hit the festival. Hmm. That's the most important thing. You, you, by the time you hit the festival, it's actually too late. Um, I think people now going into festivals with films plan it like a military operation. Um, they have worked out their strategy. They know what they're trying to achieve or they should know what they're trying to achieve. Um, they have targeted buyers. They have targeted media. Um, they have targeted festivals, they have targeted people that they want to connect with before they go into the festival. Um, and it's all kinds of different strategies. Um, a lot of it is using the expertise of other people to focus or to help the, um, the filmmaker focus on that. Um, some of it is just employing their own ideas, their own strategies, social media, et cetera, et cetera. But I think if you don't go in with a game plan uh, and a very thought out game plan, you'll find out that almost everybody else has that and so you're gonna be um, behind. So it's thinking all of those things through ahead of time in terms of your goals, your objectives and what you're actually trying to achieve through your festival screening. I'd also like to mention the uh, role that uh, going to festivals, any festival practically, um, in creating your own personal network for the promotion of your own career and your own films in the future. Um, we have a young uh, Italian filmmaker who did her first short here, Federica Foglia, and uh, she got into Toronto and then she went to Rain Dance and now she's here. So what's happening is now she is building up her own personal network for people that will be continue in, to be involved in her career and to be involved in her forward motion as she goes along. The small festivals are spectacular for doing that, for making alliances, for making friendships, right? To help the promotion of, of you and your film because in the independent world, you and your film are inextricably linked. 
Yeah, go everywhere. Go everywhere yeah. is really the, the message, I think, right? Yeah. Travel everywhere. The, the ones, the filmmakers that impressed me so much when they were younger were the ones that absolutely supported their films. Uh, in the first two or three films, I mean, just use one example, Canadian example, Adam McGoyan. He went to every festival he was invited to. He established that network of contacts, distributors, um, from all of those individual territories. So he'd go to Tokyo, he'd go to Pusan, he'd go to San Sebastian, he'd, go, he'd literally go to, as a young filmmaker, I'm not sure that you have the time as a, you know, a senior filmmaker to do that, you, cho you choose your moments, but the young filmmakers that impressed me were the ones that absolutely got out there and were just tireless in terms of working their films. That's right. Maybe we have to add something, because you mentioned Federica Foglia, but uh, a lot of young filmmakers are working with shirts and not long feature films. Yes. So maybe it's useful to consider that we four, we are in different positions facing the shirts. Uh, because in Venice days, normally we don't select shirts. And in Venice, there is only a competitive program of shirts, not really considered by the press, by the media. Uh, so it's important because it's a label to be selected with a shirt in Venice, but honestly, it's not a crucial place. It's interesting for the network, no more. Uh, in Cannes, yes, if I'm not wrong, uh, you have shirts in the different sections and you have an official competition for shirts, uh, but the main idea is to be there in order to be selected for Cine Fondation. If you can use Cannes to continue with Cine Fondation is really useful. Otherwise, it's a label, not more than this. Tribeca and Toronto are different, but there are plenty of very good festivals for shirts, which is a, a sort of other circuit. The reason why I don't select shirts is because I don't think I'm prepared to consider shirts. You need a professional and we don't have money to, to have a professional to select shirts. Um, but if you guys are working on shirts, please consider that you have plenty of possibilities of very, very good festivals, able to promote you for the best, also in this kind of production, which is the visit card, of course, to make documentaries or long feature films or TV series in the future. But it's a very, very important presentation for yourself. Yeah, I would add some, something because I, I'm also running another uh, film festival named Angers, Premier Plan. It is a festival dedicated to first and second features and first short films and student films. And it's a, it's a B festival, so I I'm not looking for world premiere and a lot of premiere. But uh, so it means that we have a lot of freedom to, 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 make, the, to make this selection of, of short films and of, of student films. And, and I think it's, uh, it's really a better place to be for when you, have, you, make, you make a student film or a short films to be in such a festival than in Cannes, as Joseph said, it's more like for CV than for uh, your career. Uh, I don't know, uh, Renard Renarsson, Grimoire, Connarsson, a lot of people, they, they came uh, in Angers with, the, with, the, with the, their, their short films and, and a lot of, uh, I don't know, people from industry, like producers and distributors, uh, even uh, from Cine Fondation, they are coming to, to watch films during the week because they, they, they like the selection we, we're making of, uh, of short. And of course, with the advent of social media, the news of your film can go around the world very quickly even if you're in a small festival in, in northern somewhere or, but you will meet interesting people, interesting networks, and the social media will get the word about you and your film out there into the world in the same way as if it were in a big festival now because of the, the way social media works, if you work your social media. Yeah, I think you, we cannot compare a festival of short films and long feature. Mm -hmm. If you see the lineup of uh, the short film festival everywhere, it's only different films. Like music, you can, I mean, and for the long feature, it's, it's mostly they came from and, uh, Toronto, uh, Tribeca on the American side, uh, Venice and a little bit Pusan and uh, uh, just six, seven film festival. And then, because I'm, I'm also running another film festival, we are 
is programming the same films. 20 years ago, it was possible to discover maybe Husserl Sien and type Hong Kong and Chinese and the Russian and Latin America. Now everybody knows everybody. You have the Cine Foundation, you have the Market, Rotterdam, Berlin, and we see the same people all the time and it's good, but it's extremely limited. And it's find the jewel, the film you are talking about. This year maybe uh, in Cannes we had the Son of Soul, which was exactly what was element of crime a long time ago, like something totally different, but it's rare. And if you see the short film, I mean the lineup of the short film uh, festival, it's all different and they're all good because there are so many, many talents. I don't say there is no talents in long feature, but it's more and more difficult to find. The small unknown film would just be the only guy festival. I mean, the smallest festival is more difficult now. Well, it was interesting in Toronto with the platform program, which was uh, um, world premieres, right? No, no, it wasn't world premieres. Okay, so there were 12 films picked, and there were, the jury was Agnieszka Holland, uh, Claire Denis, and Jean Jean Que. And they went through these films, and um, they picked a Canadian documentary. And they were not under no compunction or pressure to pick anything Canadian. In fact, they, these are very hardcore cinephiles, and they were told simply to pick the best from their point of view. And they ended up picking um, a film by Alan Zweig called Hurt, a documentary about um, Terry Fox is the guy with the crippled leg who ran across Canada. And this is a guy who was also with the crippled leg who tried to run across Canada, but he had a troubled life, he had a troubled run, he had a troubled everything. Anyway, this was the film that they picked that nobody was on nobody's radar. And, uh, and now he's off to the races, having been picked by these very hardcore people. Um, I would say that, uh, I'm gonna open it now for questions. Does anybody have any questions to ask these guys? Ingrid. one film out in front of the other. And the second part of that is, for the two that you can't program and you love, do you talk to each other behind the scenes? Ingrid, there's no formula, boy. Um, in some cases, it's, it's more than that, actually. You've got 30 films and there's only th four slots. Um, how do you make those decisions? In Toronto, I think it's um, it's a balanced program. It's balanced. You're um, you're taking a, a whole bunch of things into consideration. To be honest, it's really unfair on the filmmakers because this you're you're saying no for no good reason. It's very difficult. Um, I mean, we probably have to get on the phone to people and say this is why we're not taking your film. There's no one really good reason, but I think you are looking for a balanced program. And I think at the end of the day, that's probably what comes into my mind, um, especially when you sit on top of, like it's a big international festival. Do we have films from this particular country? We've got 10 French films. We've got no film from Burkina Faso. Maybe that's one of the reasons that we actually run it. Or it's a film by a first time filmmaker, or it's a film by a woman. And I think, I certainly in Toronto, we're very conscious about, and it's a debate in Hollywood these days, um, the lack of, of films being directed by women. So I think you take a range of factors in, into consideration. I think there was a second part of your question, but I've forgotten it. Do you talk to each other with those ones that you love but you don't have room for? Never. Um, <laughs> it's actually not true. I mean, it, but we don't, it's funny. We're, we all know each other. I mean, I've known Giorgio for 30 years. I mean, he helped me put a program together in Toronto. Um, it was invaluable. And I see him in Rome almost every year. And we talk about all the Italian films. That we, you know, I'm there to, in Rome to see Italian films and he's seen them. And he's very open in terms of sharing information. Um, and I would say it's, it's very collegial with a lot of other festival directors. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? But we don't actually get on the phone a lot. Uh, I rarely do it, to be honest. I mean, it really is like a personal connection. I think you could say they're friendly all year long. And then when it comes down to the actual selection, 
they start. Yeah, the okay. filmmaker, they don't want to know they were rejected. So it's like a, it's a secret between you and me, uh, between uh, Giorgio and you, and then we don't want to say, oh, this was rejected. Especially if uh, the rejected film is a success in the other festi film festival, you don't want to share immediately. Of course, we are talking a lot about films, but we are not talking they were rejected. That's it. Maybe I can add from my point of view something. Uh, in my conception, the selection for a festival, it's uh, a music. Um, I don't know if the regular film goer participating in a festival can understand, can feel it. But I have to try to organize my program in a logical way with some forte and some piano, some allegro and some tragic. So at a certain point of your selection, you have just one or two places and you have to select among a larger number of films. So for myself, the crucial point at this point of the selection is what is the general image, the general glance of this selection? Am I able to add something or am I forced to repeat a single note? Uh, which is the reason why normally some of the good films rejected uh, are a real reason of painful for me because I know that they are really good. Sometimes someone helps. You are in a very bad position and suddenly the producer or the director writes you saying, we received another invitation. What do you suggest? To accept or to refuse because we're waiting for you? And you said, oh no, please, accept. <laughs> it's very useful now for your career to be more international and you have a lot of arguments to encourage them to go outside. Um, sometimes, very rarely, they are right. We don't speak each other. Also because I have a certain respect of the director. He offered me something. It's not so fair to, to treat him like a meat. Uh, do you want a fillet? Do you want to, two kilos for one? No, it's unfair. Um, sometimes, very rarely, I asked to some colleagues to help me, especially once in my life. Um, I'm sorry, it's an Italian story, but I saw an Italian movie once I totally finished the selection and there was no place, absolutely no place for this film, which was really surprising. So I was first to say to the director, unfortunately, I can't. The only place I can give you is the very last day, at the very last moment, it's not good for you, honestly. It's good for me because I'm sure that I discover a talent, but it will be a disaster for you, so don't accept. And. I tried to call all my Italian colleagues of the other festival coming after Venice, saying, listen, this is the real reason why, uh, but please take note, there is something in this. No chance. A very, very little Italian film festival selected the film six months later, without any recommendation from my side, and the film was the first feature film of Giorgio Diritti, Il Vento Fa Il Suo Giro, who had a fantastic international career. And now Giorgio Diritti is not the new Visconti, but is a very good and very well established Italian director. But in this case, clearly, the, my colleagues had the suspicion that I tried to push a friend or to push a rejected movie for any strange reasons, and I hadn't chance to help him. I'm sorry. I know. Are you such an orchestra conductor? <laughs> the thing is that uh, I think more, more everything has, has been uh, uh, told, but uh, it's true that it's, it happens quite rarely that uh, at the end of a selection process, you still have five films you really love <laughs> suddenly because you already invited uh, all the films.
you love, but it could it could happen, and you have the possibilities. You, you can try to push the walls, and to to include the the five films. So sometimes we manage to to do that, to do so. But as Jose said, sometimes not necessary because when you have, for example, in Directors Fort Nine, when we have already picked up something like 15 films, we know maybe what we are uh, looking looking for, and sometimes uh, you, you if you can feel that uh, you. Some 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 tone, some color is missing at the of the in the in the selection. Maybe you're more looking for documentary. Maybe you're more looking for a genre film. It's like a kind of a, it's um, because it can, it can be unfair. For example, sometimes you can you can have a much a lot of films on the same topic, and so maybe you don't we don't want you don't want to uh, to pick up some maybe three four films on the same topic. So you know that the film will find its place in an, soon in another, another festival. And regarding the, the discussion between, it's true that when you, when you are in the middle of the process, you're not like uh, thinking about uh, calling <laughs> your colleagues to, to say that maybe they could uh, they could uh, find this film. But it happens that uh, in in Cannes because it's, uh, all the sections are, uh, they are it, uh, there's a competition of course between the sections. We can, say. but uh, I don't know. Uh, Edouard and Ventrop with the, can talk with uh, Charles Tesson and sometimes with Thierry Frémaux. And I, rem I remember that at some, I remember some day the, with Edouard and Charles, they were discussing and the, Edouard felt that maybe the film would be more, uh, would be, the promotion of the film would be better in the, in the, in the Critics Week. And he, he let the film go there. So it was, uh, can, it can happen sometimes. Frédéric? Uh, no, I have nothing to say more. I think that sometimes people are saying, Most of the time, the dark film are the best film. We never make any critics about the Berman film, it's dark, but it's also the main film. So sometimes we are, we are a little bit forced to find feel good movie. I would not say comedy, but something. And then for us, of course, it's, but it's so rare to find, it's more difficult to find this film. So if we have a very dark selection and you bring your film, which is beautiful but dark again, it, it will not be a priority. And then, of course, I mean, could be, but we, if we have too many films looks alike and so many people are saying, wow, is it <laughs> so it's a no of that. Um, I'd just like to point out that with uh, Arno and with Giorgio, who runs a film noir festival in Courmayeur, also, for people who have film noirs, you should also think about Giorgio. And what are the kind of films that you run in Angers? Sorry? What kind of film do you run in Angers? It's more like, uh, I would say, Films from Locarno, San Sebastian. Yes. And so art house films, and uh, I don't know, come from Noy Albinoy to. <laughs> Very good, okay. Yeah. Are there any more questions? Do, do anybody have a question? Go ahead. Monsieur? Well, here, hold on. Here. Oh, okay, sorry. Hello. <clears throat> I want to ask um, uh, you come from these big festivals that. Uh, in, in uh, Venice and, and Cannes that uh, focus mostly on the features, that focuses on that more than uh, the shorts. And I'm maybe asking on behalf of my students here and, and becoming uh, filmmakers, uh, is that maybe, uh, what's the, is it better for them uh, maybe to, to start there or for example in Clermont-Ferrand, uh, more focusing on the, 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 the short film festivals? Because maybe the, the short films are not so much noticed in these festivals. Are you saying like is if, if I have a wonderful short film, am I better to go to Clermont Ferrand yeah, or am I better to yeah. go to Cannes yeah. or yeah. Toronto yeah. or something? Yeah. 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 Or, I think it's, for example, in, in festivals such as Cannes, is strange because uh, if, if it's the first experience of a film festival for a director, it can be really real. Because there is, as George said uh, before, it's, there is no real audience. It's like uh, people from the industry, people from, and and I would say that uh, there are very few people uh, who are really uh, uh, taking case of this uh, of the screenings. So I think that for the for the for the for the screening of these short films, it's uh, it's it's more important, as uh, as we said, for your 
curriculum vitae for, this, for the CV as a label, because after that it can be very important for when you're going to see producers or distributors to, to show that your film was in Cannes. And I have to admit that uh, all the, the, the selection from Berlin, from Cannes you know, for short films is, is, quite, is quite a good, very good selection. But uh, I think you can find your way with a lot of other film festivals, in, uh, such as Clermont-Ferrand, of course, and many other, uh, many others like Oberhausen, or uh, they are, and they make a wonderful job for uh, for short films. And but and usually you have to know that it's uh, with a short film you you can have a long career of uh, because uh, and we, we you can premiere in a festival and then have a, a lot of lot of selections. But for example, I, re I realized some years ago that. For, uh, the, the, the short film won the Palme d'Or. Uh, he, he had a very sh short career because other festivals didn't want to take it. Like, okay, this film already won the Palme d'Or Cannes, so maybe he had, he had his success, but no one had seen the film. <laughs> but uh, there's a case in Canada of a young uh, up-and-coming director, Stephen Dunn. His first shorts went to Sundance. So every time he came into a room, he said he was introduced as the guy whose shorts went to Sundance. And that became a very helpful thing for him as he prepared his feature, his first feature. And it's so um, I think there, in my opinion, there's some credibility to, to be done. If you can get into a big festival, people will notice you, they will notice you. But in the meantime, that, but that's, winning the lottery almost. I mean, that's a very slim chance, but it's always, you always try, that's for sure. You always try. And then you have the support of the main short film festivals to back you up all the way anyway. But uh, I would say try. Uh, any other questions? You had one? Um, my question is, um when you're selecting uh, films that have been submitted to your festival, uh, do you, uh, what happened to films that on, don't have a production company attached? Uh, is it, uh, do you disqualify like uh, they don't have a production company so I won't, able, won't be able to sell it so I don't watch it? Or do you mean a sales company or a production company? A production company. Well, some, but you have a producer. No, we, we self-produce it. Yeah. So you but are, we don't you are the producer. Yeah, but we don't have a name. We don't have uh, I don't. I don't know. Yet, yet. Yeah, yet. Yeah, it makes no difference at all. The okay. it's absolutely not. We're looking for the best films out there. And in some cases, a film like yours, truly independent film, that's going to be the film that breaks through the festival become the most important, or one of the most important. That's what I think most of us up here are actually looking for, people like you who have don't have a machine behind them. Um, I think that's what we see. Our, 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 we do a lot of other things. We help us show a lot of films with machines, you know, companies behind them. But I think what we really firmly believe in, I mean, all of my colleagues know them very well, is people like you. We, we want to find and help you. That's what festivals were really designed to do, is to help the independent film. What I can suggest in that is that if you are selected, please, before the festival, try to find an international center. This must be very, very useful for the career of the film after the film. And not before. Me personally, I dislike to know everything about the film before I see it. If I can, don't have any kind of information, just facing a story, facing some images, facing a plot, and really happy. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wondered, um, do you ever give notes to, to filmmakers um, as a sort of a condition of selecting their films? I mean, I just ask because I heard that can the competition, sometimes they have, I mean, I think Terence Davis last year, somebody said, Ruben Osmond, that in order to get a place in competition, they, you know, the actual festival would ask the artist, the director, to make changes in, in the films, is that something you, any of you four, would ever, would ever do? <laughs> and, and does this happen, or is this? Um, it's a good question. Um, from from our perspective, filmmakers are looking for for um, feedback. They are, in some cases, um, if they ask me, I'll actually give them quite detailed. Not all filmmakers, 
Um, and it depends on the relationship I have with them. Some of these are filmmakers that I've known for many, many years. Um, but even some first-time filmmakers, they'll just, they ask. It's surprising, a lot of people don't actually ask. Or maybe they don't, um, yeah. The, but when they do, I will actually give them quite detailed notes. Um, in terms of, we do give feedback to not just the filmmaker, but to companies that submit the films to us, distributors, sales agents, sell sort of what, what was your reaction? Um, well, in some cases, of course, you love the film. And then there's other cases where you have to be very sensitive that it's not finished. Uh, we see a lot of films, to be honest, when it's far from complete. So we're one of the first audiences that have ever seen this film, and they're actually looking for a response. Um, and you'll say, it's this, it's that, uh, you know, I wish there was more. But I, I, we've never been in a position where you have to make this cut, otherwise we're not going to show your film. Um, so I can't comment on any um, of those examples you've just provided. Um, but no, we'll be often be asked for feedback, and sometimes it's incorporated, absolutely incorporated. I mean, I can cite you know, numerous examples, actually, of films in this year's festival in Toronto where that actually happened. Um, but it wasn't just us they were soliciting. They were showing this film around to a number of other audiences at the same time, a tar you know, um, test screenings, uh, their friends, and they were obviously grappling with issues that the film had. There were problems in the film, and they were looking for feedback. We just happened to be one of the, the constituencies that, that actually fed back. Of course, we are giving feedback. This is the most important, is to say and to respect the filmmakers because, um, of course, we don't know maybe the next one we're going to have it, and it's important to... <laughs> but sometimes it's happened, and it was uh, crucial when I was uh, working at a fortnight uh, before um, uh, Edouard, Vintrop, and uh, Arnaud. Uh, it, it, so many filmmakers, they were desperate because they really wanted to go to Cannes, to go to Cannes, to go... They were obsessed. So sometimes they, they, they told me, well, be honest. And I said, sometimes I said, yeah, but the film is a little bit long. Where should I cut? <laughs> because they wanted me to maybe to re-edit the film to be able to be selected. Really, it's, hap it's happened all the time because people say, oh, what should I do to be selected? Let me know. It's happened all the time. I mean, not, 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 not so much in, um, in Tribeca, but in Cannes, yes. Uh, what he says is, is really true, of course. Uh, you have to say to, to give feedbacks, and you have to, to, to and they, they tell they, if you are not picking up the film, they ask you why. So you you, you tell them why. So they're like, okay, so I'm going to to get rid of this thing, and maybe, and so they they are going with a new cut, with a new cut, with a new cut. At the end, you don't recognize the first film you saw, but. <laughs> But uh, that's why I think that, uh, as you say, they are obsessed with Cannes, and there are a lot of very good film festivals after, and you have to take the time for the editing and not to, to, to be in a rush to, to finish, even if you have to take one year more, I don't know. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's maybe that because there are some pressure of the market, uh, sometimes of the sales agents as well, because they want the film to be in Cannes, so they, make, they try to make that, that possible. I think the only thing I'd add to this is um, I, I'd urge you to be cautious in terms of when you show your film to a festival and in what state. Um, and I'm not sure there's any hard and fast rule here, but um, first impressions are lasting impressions. <laughs> they really are. So um, I've seen films very, very early stages and um, the, it wasn't there. It really wasn't there. And the filmmaker wants to show it to you a second time. They want to go two, two months later. And of course, you go into the second screening with the first screening still in your head. You still have a negative feeling towards the film. So I think the, um, and again, there's, uh, I'd be interested in the comments from my colleagues. There's no hard and fast rule about when you actually should show your film to a festival. But I would say you get it as close to completion as you possibly can. Um, that you're really very, very close in terms of it's a fine cut. Um, even if it's temp music, the temp music is pretty close to the music that you're finally going to use in the film. It's a pretty good indication. That, I mean, like Giorgio, you want to kind of go in blank, um, not knowing too much about the film, because your first impression is really, really crucial. Uh, and a second time and a third time, it's very, very hard to go into that screening in a kind of a positive way as a programmer. Well, I'm old enough to receive a certain number of phone calls by directors asking to have an opinion, to have a point of view, even if a film will be selected or not. Uh, 
But I'm very conscient that a festival programmer is not an editor, is not a producer, he's not a director. So you can offer your personal reactions, just like a normal film goer, saying, I had this impression, and then it's up to you to use it in a way or another. And apart of that, of course, no one, especially in the Venice days, can impose a cut to a, <laughs> a director. I experienced two festival directors uh, considering themselves one good director and the second good producer. The first one was Gillo Pontecorvo. He was a director. <laughs> so he had a lot of ideas about the films. Uh, and especially once in his life, he saw a film by a Portuguese director, Monteiro, and suggested to Mr. Monteiro to cut more or less 40 minutes in his film. 40 minutes? 40 minutes. Mama mia. And Monteiro said, of course, yes, maestro. I want to be in Venice. I'll cut. And he presented in Venice a longer version of 55 minutes more. <laughs> Uh, the only problem is that I was the deputy director at that time and I wasn't aware of the real length of the film, <laughs> so I considered the program with 55 minutes less, which was not so easy because the film after was Strange Days by Catherine Bigelow. The tail end of that story is we sh showed this film in Toronto and we thought it was 40 minutes and we put it in our program book with the running time that we thought you would provide it in Venice and we actually ended up with a film that was 55 minutes longer and it completely screwed up our schedule. <laughs> The second guy is Marco Müller. Marco is a very good producer, so he has clear ideas about films. And he helped a lot, a certain number of directors, to improve and to change something in their films before the presentation in a major film festival. Uh, but he's a very special kind of man. Mm, more or less, he's unique. So normally, please, if you are filmmakers, consider that our job is different. Don't accept too many suggestions, apart from the friendly suggestions. A question here? Hi, it's Jason Gorber, part of the Canadian Invasion. Um, <laughs> we have two dynamics here. We have two programmers that are programming primarily for audiences and two programmers that are programming for a selection. When you're programming on your selection, how much control do you have over what you talked about, the timetable, about putting your best foot forward at early in the festival versus the films that you love but might be later in the festival? Do you guys control that schedule? Because you guys seem to have the luxury of only showing films that you personally love. And for those programming for a wider audience, could you talk about programming films that might not have you respond to them directly but you know will play very well to a local audience? If somebody has to go. <laughs> Very quickly, we don't have too much pressures. We are free enough. Of course, you have to consider that at a certain date, uh, an actor can be free or not. Um, my main problem is to convince someone to have the closing film. Because I, I know that the closing problem. film is a yeah. trap. But I have to present it like a fantastic opportunity. Uh, so I know that I'm not sincere. So this is my main problem every time. For the rest, no. Uh, we are totally free to try to do the best. And normally the producers and the directors are really cooperative with us. But your, your top is the first films and sort of, can we consider the order of the films? No, no, no. Uh, I consider myself like a conductor. So. You have to open with a certain kind of film. Then you have to take a break. Somewhere. Then you have to enforce, especially because this is, will be the main idea of your section that the, the audience will serve. Uh, then you need a discovery, something unexpected. Then you need a relax. Then you need again because the last is you leave. And then there is the closing film. 
Yeah, <laughs> I would say that the thing is that everything is going very quickly because I think it, in, two, in three weeks you have to, to, to make this, I would say between or mid-March mid and mid-April, you have to, to make the selection and, to, and you compose at the same time, I would say, the schedule of the, of the selection. So you're, you're still watching films and you're already thinking about the way you're going to, 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 to put the films in the, in the, in the week. And, um, because, of course, as I say, the place is important. It, it can be a part of the negotiation with sometimes sales or producers because they are telling you, okay, I have two invitations. One from the official selection from, for example, La Terraga, and one from you. So what do you, what do you give us? Why? So will you give us a good place for it? Of course, it's part of the, part of the process as well. And maybe it's, it's how you much you desire the film, how much you love it, but also sometimes how, uh, what, what would be the, the exposition of the films. And, but it's not the case for all the films because the, this is a prime offer for rich people when they have two or three invitations. Not always the case, but it can happen. And then you know, when, you, when you compose, of course, it's like you, you, you need, for example, maybe some strong films to, to, start the, the weeks, the, the, to start the week because you need to, the audience to be confident with your selections. But then you, you can offer maybe some, some surprise and, of course, for example, a debut film and, and then uh, I don't know, an homage to uh, some, uh, an, an old uh, uh, director, it can, it's, uh, it depends. And, uh, and of course you, you know as well what's going to happen in the other sections sometimes and you don't want to interfere that it, hap it happens as well. No, no, I just, uh, 